Here we go. All right. Uh, all right. And we are live. We have made it another week and we are here. So hello and welcome to everyone who is watching the Written and Melanin channel. Wherever this day may have found you, we are so glad that you're here. My name is Chelsea, better known as CM Lockhart, and I'm here as always with the Le Case Cousineau. And we are here to bring some melanin to your pages. And first of all, I want you guys to know that we have been looking at the chat and I love, <laughs> I love you guys so much. It's oh, just... hot mess. <laughs> hot mess. We're yeah. just over here watching. <laughs> so hello to everyone. Um, hello. I think Ben was first. Um, then LaCase hopped in. Ashley is here. Hey, how you doing? Salter EA. Uh, let's see here. Audra, Mickey popped in. Hello, everyone. We're so glad that you're here. We're going to have a great day. I'm just going to let you know I can't hold it together. Um... So, I don't know how this is going to go. I'm going to be, yeah. So, <laughs> that being said, um, let's just get into this. Let's just start with our Melanin Spotlight, cool. our books of the week. And just so you know, if you haven't already, yeah. feel free to like the, the stream because that helps with the algorithm. Um, the books we're about to tell you about, they are links down in the description box below. Those are affiliate links because I have to legally tell you that. And so now you know. You don't get charged any extra, but we do get a slight kickback if you de decide to purchase either of these books using links below. There we go. Also, check out the Melanin Library because if you can't find it there, you can check it there too. There we go. Look, Kate, <gasps> you can go first. <laughs> oh, lip pop. Oh. <laughs> my, my book of the week is mm -hmm. The Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste. So here's the description. Corinne Lemaire isn't afraid of anything. Not scorpions, not the boys who tease her, and certainly not Jumbies. They're just tricksters parents make up to frighten their children. Then one night, Corinne chases an agouti all the way into the forbidden forest. Those shining yellow eyes that followed her to the edge of the trees, they couldn't belong to a Jumbie, or could they? When Corinne spots a beautiful stranger speaking to the town witch at the market the next day, she knows something unexpected is about to happen. And when this same beauty, called Severine, turns up at Corinne's house cooking dinner for Corinne's father, Corinne is sure the danger is in, that danger is in the air. She soon finds out that bewitching her father, Pierre, is only the first step in Severine's plan to claim the entire island for the Jumbies. Corinne must call on her courage and her friends and learn to use ancient magic she didn't know she possessed Stop Severine and save her home. That is the Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste, and I am here for the island-inspired intrigue. It sounds so good. <laughs> Honestly, I love it when we have a book where the town is so small, where everybody knows everybody. So literally, if anybody shows up who doesn't belong, they're like, "Oh, who are you? What you doing here?" They're like, so wait, who's that? <laughs> I don't know. Your, I don't know you. Your mama, your auntie, your uncle. Who are you? It's like, what's your lineage, homie? Where are you from? Yeah. <laughs> You ready, you ready to Charlie Brown in them? <laughs> Not Charlie Brown. It's always a Charlie Brown. <laughs> it's always a Charlie. Or a Pookie. <laughs> <laughs> and them. It doesn't matter who. And Charlie and them. And them. Pookie and them. Like, who you at? <laughs> Charlie's an only child, but it's an and them. <laughs> and them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right, you guys. Um... My book is Black Isis, Witch Academy by Roz Carter. And part of the reason I picked this book is to stay in the vein of magic, because in case you missed it this weekend, I had the lovely opportunity to talk to Amanda Ross, who is the author of To a Sarah with Love, which has black witches, um, vampires, a lot of fantasy, amazing world building. So if you a want to, um, like a cross country road trip, life or death situations, like, we could talk about it, but we're talking about Black Isis. If you want to see the interview, uh, check it out. It is on the channel under the author interviews on the homepage. So there you go. Um, don't know why I did this. I'm sorry. I put my hands down. Um, <laughs> Black Isis, Witch, Witch Academy by Roz Carter. Kaya Covington is your typical teenager. She deals with family stuff, friend drama, her mom, who is a challenge. Oh, and she's a witch. 
Actually, she comes from a long line of black witches, but that's just ordinary life for Kaya. When tragedy strikes at home, instead of being comforted by her family, she's sent off to the exclusive Black Isis Witch Academy. From the little information she's given, it's the academy where witches from all the best black witch families go for finishing. Black Isis sits protected by ancient magic, undisturbed in the Great Dismal Swamp in North Carolina. What happens during her first year at Black Isis is beyond anything Kai could have imagined. She and the other baby witches will forge bonds <laughs> and break them as they learn what it means to study their craft under the watchful eye of headmistress Pendergrass at Black Isis Witch Academy. Black Isis is a spellbinding story of Kaya Covington, a young black teenage witch. If you want a story filled with the adventures of teenage witches learning their craft in a witch academy unlike any other, Black Isis Witch Academy is for you. Sounds fabulous. So, I mean, really honestly, good. who doesn't want a story with black witches? Just saying. Um, also, author D.L. White just popped up in the chat. Hey, how you doing? Um... <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, Shamey. Shamey, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, links to both those books are down in the um, description box below. And honestly, you guys, if you have any more book recommendations with black witches or black fantasy in general, you know that's kind of our jam. So let us know so that we can shout them out and make sure that they are on the uh, Melanin Library because I guess don't you? Mm. See, my mind went like five other places and the case already knows that I have the attention of a rabbit today. So let's not and let's stay. You don't have to nod and agree. <laughs> She's just very like, very like relaxed nod as well. A very loose neck. As Jess Cadjo herself would say, loose neck. <laughs> um... But today, you guys, we are here to talk about breaking up your story. And basically, let's let's talk about this. Because as authors, we huh? always have, let's say, big dreams, right? Totally. <laughs> and it could go either way. It could go left or right. You could be like, ooh, I want to write 10 books. And then you'd be like, mm, I got maybe one. Or it could go the other way. You're like, I'm just going to write one one little book. It's just going to be real cute, real quick. And then you'd be like, okay, mm -hmm. so I'm on like book eight. And it was only supposed to be one. Yes. yes. <laughs> get, get, away, get away from you. It's definitely yeah. an important topic. It's something that I struggled with myself. Yeah, I do too. Um, I have the first problem. I thought, ooh, I'm going to write so many books. And I was like, mm, nah, I better just write one. <laughs> I have the latter. I was going to do one book. And I'm like, no, I want to do more. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know we have, we have swapped it so that'll be that'll be good for the discussion yes and um i saw this ashley posted that she was also in this predicament recently i'm going to say this it wasn't your decision <laughs> we didn't pick this topic because of you but it is right. relevant, <laughs> it is relevant. <laughs> also hi jt henry welcome to the chat welcome <laughs> um i don't know why i said that so loud i'm so sorry you guys if that blew out your eardrums eardrums <laughs> I'm, I'm a little chaotic today if you couldn't tell i'm sorry it's 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 fine it's good is it is it um, it will be <laughs> okay so this is our attempt to i guess share what we know about deciding whether your book is going to be a singular book or a series and this is all trial and error for the most part mm -hmm. as in learned from and Take it with a grain of salt. Of course, if you guys have your own tips, tricks, whatever, drop it in the chat and we'll talk about it. Um, right. So, first thing that I would say, consider, is um, is there a clear break in the story? That was my personal issue. Um, mm -hmm. When I was decided that I was going to write three three books or whatever, I was like, ooh, because I want to tell the story and it's going to just have like a beginning, middle, and end. And I was like, <laughs> that doesn't work because individual books have beginning, middles, and ends. So... That didn't, that right. clearly was not thought out well. That was yeah. on me. That was on me. That's a good point, though. <laughs> but um, but if you do, I always think about it like, oh, I can't. The one that came to mind is we don't talk about her anymore. So is there another series that's kind of well known? Oh, um, I could go with uh, Lord of the Rings or <laughs> let me think of a black series actually. Oh. Um, oh, okay. What about um Binti? It's a series oh, of novellas, okay. but it works really well as a series. It does. I think. 
Okay. Or Trey Wells of Furies. See, I like how you pulled that out of your, like, your little hat out of your bag. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that poses for I don't know where that came from. <laughs> oh, we're not okay. going to make it, Chelsea. No, we're not. <laughs> we, got, we got about 20 minutes. We got about 20 minutes left in us before it goes into a proper hoot. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Okay, okay, you go ahead. I, I'm gonna try to remember the thought I had to put in put in our notes so I can come back to it later. Oh. Oh. Chelsea, please hold it together. <laughs> one, one of us has to. This is. I'm sorry, you guys. This is the problem I was having earlier. I can't. I can't stop. Okay. Jump in. Do you want me to jump in? <laughs> Okay, um, I'm gonna jump in. So, <laughs> let's. How about you mute yourself because you have a very high pitched squeak. <laughs> oh. squeak. Okay. <laughs> See. <laughs> Pray for us, y'all. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. Audra, great suggestion. The Broken Earth trilogy. Wait, yep. is that what I just said? No, that's something different. Okay, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> okay, no. Vince is not. Oh, God. I'm okay. sorry, Audra. Okay. Thank you. Um, the suggestion. So, there's the Broken Earth trilogy, which is by N.K. Okay. Jemison. She's got, like, three trilogies, I want to say. Oh and they're God. all, like, award-winning. So, you can't really go, so good. go wrong. You really can't. And then, um... D.L. White has her series as well, um, Dinner at Sam's and Brunch at Ruby's. So definitely check those huh. out. Um, and there are plenty. If you, want, if you want to find more, there's always more on the Melon Library. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, you guys. Uh-uh. I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't look at her. I've had to, like, I've had to, like, I've, I've minimized our individual chat so I can just... I'm going to say it's your turn. Did she just say double, she's ignoring different. me on the live? That's so rude. No, I'm not ignoring you. If I look at you, I'll start laughing. Okay. All right, we're done. We're done. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, you guys. <coughs> oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry. Um, um, what, was, what were we saying? A clear, break in the, <laughs> clear break in the story. So we're going to go with Binti because I've actually read all three of those. And... Part of the reason that works is because they're like they mm, she goes she goes on a journey, and there's specific parts and defining moments of that journey. But there's but it can be, it holds its own as something separate, which is why it works. And I think that's something that we have to consider as writers when we're trying to write multiple parts. I can't. <laughs> yeah, I would all. <laughs> And I would also include uh, in that thought process is um, when you're looking for a natural break, I would also think about whether or not extending the story takes away from the overall, like, impact of what you're trying to do. You know, if you draw yeah. it out, does that kind of negate everything that happened that you've already done? Yeah. Um, or just shortening it, um, uh, like affect the reader like the readability of it you know what i mean i think that's really important when you're looking for those natural breaks i honestly my i was trying my whole brain process was don't laugh don't laugh don't laugh don't laugh so i missed everything i thought in your eyes (laughs) i'm sorry i'm sorry (laughs) i don't know what she just said I, i she was like this Oh, I'm gonna be sick. I'm t- we, we, laughed, we laughed so much before we got on here. I'm, I'm like, sorry. I'm so tired. I don't know. I'm so tired. <laughs> um, well, but okay, got it. Okay, got so it. so Dio White put in the chat that she doesn't understand why fantasy is allowed to be so long. And honestly, that is a very good question because I feel Great like with, question. with fantasy, it's given so much grace. So like, if you have like a 600 page fantasy novel, people will accept that as just fact. But then, like, if you get a romance novel, they want you to be wrapping that up in, like, two, 250 pages at best. 
Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and I think part of that is due to the, I think part of it's the world building because when you have romance, especially contemporary, you don't have to build the world necessarily. Mm-hmm. You just have to introduce the characters. Whereas in a fantasy, you have to create the rules. You have to create the world. You have to do. Well, oh, y'all, this is, this has been me all day. Oh. My brain just stopped in the middle of a sentence. I was like. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not frozen. I just, my brain didn't keep up with the train of thought. It lost. I feel like my brain all day has been what? me trying to catch a train and it keeps leaving me. And so <clears throat> I'm just telling you what I see in the distance. I'm not on that train of thought. I don't know where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I hope we're not going to make it. But <laughs> Yes, babe, great point. If you leave out too many things of the first book, it can leave readers dissatisfied. Yes. But on the flip side of that, if you put too much in the first book and you don't actually give also, them enough plot, <laughs> it's like you'll also be leaving dissatisfied. And so when you're talking about writing... Line multiple stories especially when it comes to um it is not an edible i'm completely sober <laughs> you said edible edition oh god said, that's the terrible part you guys i don't know i woke up this morning i've been like this all day i can't tell you what it is i don't know maybe it's that adhd finally catching up to me <laughs> i don't know i thought the stream i thought the stream froze me too <laughs> i'm like oh no i lost her i do love that chelsea is like full of energy and able to laugh. And I'm so tired that my laugh is just coming out like a whimper. Like, ah. <laughs> Not a whimper. Um, ah. Ah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I was saying something that was actually somewhat intelligent and then I forgot. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> world building. Just make sure that something is happening. And that's kind of what it, it boils down to because I know in fantasy like having spoken to other fantasy authors um a lot of the first book generally speaking at least in a first draft not necessarily what makes it there is trying to get a setup to make sure that the reader is fully immersed but then you also have to remember that you can't have 100 pages of world building nobody wants to read that and (laughs) if you need multiple books because you need 100 pages of world building you probably don't need multiple books you probably need to condense what you have condense it which is right the next point we had is just like if you have a really long story i would say like look at how many actual scenes and plot points you have because if it's just really long because you're like an overwriter that's a real thing and it's fine but yep. also you yep. can condense that and what you think maybe you know four books may actually only be like two you know mm-hmm. <clears throat> it just depends on what Absolutely. you what you deem is uh necessary totally i, don't know why I, did I this. think Oh, I didn't see it. Uh, I'm glad you I, didn't. I you didn't need to. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, I'm so sick of you. You looked at it anyway, didn't you? Um, but um, Benjamin and D.O. White um, put it succinctly. You Each book has to have a separate payoff. So it needs to be a different story. Um so, like, in Binti, if you haven't read it, this isn't spoiler. This is literally just summary for the book. In the first book, she leaves to go to a university, and then that trip gets interrupted by aliens, right? And she has to make some hard decisions, and that's the first book. It's just her trying to make it to her destination. In the second book, mm-hmm. she's at her destination, but she is homesick because she's light years away from home. And right. that's, you know, having to deal with the consequences of the first book, but also what's happening in the second and then the third Mm -hmm. book is you know building off of that so not only did she have to she she dealing with the consequences from what happened in the first book she's now and also what happened in the second book and the third book she's Mm -hmm. you know having to you know deal with her family seeing who she's become without them i'll say Mm -hmm. and making Mm -hmm. decisions off of that so that's like a completely different story than what the first one was and I feel like when you're talking about breaking up your stories, that's what matters. Is it a different story? Because if it's still the same journey, that's fine if you have an overarching villain. And as I call it in my head, if like if you have a big villain, essentially, mm-hmm. that they're trying mm-hmm. to fight, that they can't, they're not ready. Like in the first book, they're still at level, level one. They're not ready to fight the big bad, right? Mm-hmm. If you have multiple stories, that entire time, they still have to have other little little 
I was gonna say littler, smaller villains that they have to, or a smaller problem, smaller antagonist that they can actually face. You have to build up to it. Mm -hmm. You have to build up to it. I I think you. I think it's really important to, if you if you decide to extend your story, it does need to be like Chelsea said, um, a new piece of the journey. But I think it also needs to be a continuation of what we've already experienced. Like I. I really don't enjoy series where one book is one character and one story, and the next book is like a retread of that story, but with another character. That mm-hmm. to me is a little bit, that's kind of tedious. So I would definitely, um, I mean, if, if your story is told, because that, that to me tells me that the story's been told. And like now we're just looking for a way to like revisit it. And that to me, I, I, I don't think we can ask our, our readers to pay for that. Exactly. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so I do think if, it, it's great, and that's a point we're going to get to in a second mm-hmm. about point of view and all that those things. But I think it, it's it's a great idea to have point of view characters, but um, it need, the things need to be progressing forward. I don't think it's if you are wanting to tell another story where we're going backwards. I would just say that you've already told the story. <laughs> Let's go write another book. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, with the exception of prequels, because I do think a prequel can be oh, yeah. done really well. Yeah, um, I, I think so too. But but that's that's prior to the story we've already heard. Yeah, but, leads up to it. Exactly. Know? And so the only one that I can think of off the top of my head is obviously, y'all know I love Avatar. So <clears throat> the Rise of Kiyoshi follows yes. obviously the Avatar <clears throat> Avatar Kiyoshi before everything that happens in the uh, animated series and the comics that follow. And so that yeah. prequel is so far removed from the actual timeline that we're familiar with in the regular mm-hmm. series that you feel like you're actually getting something extra from it yes, by reading exactly. it. Exactly. So Exactly. Kind of going back to what we said before that something else has to happen. There has to be a, a actual villain and I will say this for prequels, I've I've personally found those a little bit diff- more difficult because you mm-hmm. have to essentially write the history. So everything that you've already established, you have it has to lead up to that point. You can't with prequels you're not at a point where you can change it whereas when you're writing forward, you can tweak things as you need to. I'll say. Yeah. You can. Yeah. Um, good point. So, um, Ben pointed out that um, with fantasy, you have to slowly add the necessary amount of world building for the plot and leave a lot of things for later and yeah. just leave breadcrumbs. And I'll say the breadcrumbs are important regardless of whether you're writing fantasy, romance, um, horror, yeah, thriller, any kind, of, <clears throat> yep. any kind of anything. Like, because I, the, the, the advice that we always get is just like, don't info dump right nobody wants to read like pages and pages of exposition however you're like you need to set up the world breadcrumbs are important because it as a reader you get a certain payoff when you realize oh that's why the author told me this or oh that's why this happened you know and when and then something that i've learned um just reading is just like if you just kind of as a writer if you just kind of assume that your writers or your readers (laughs) will take um, what you what happens in the story as just like as law essentially like it just assumes they're not dumb if as ugh, I can't articulate because I'm struggling to not laugh um, what am I trying to say basically if you as a writer assume write something with the assumption that your readers will just understand that this is how the world naturally works nine times out of ten they will um by that, I mean, going back to Avatar, because it lives rent-free in my head. Um, quality. It's high quality. <laughs> you know, from... You understand immediately that there are four types of bending. And that nobody can bend multiple ones. You get one, or you don't get any. Unless mm-hmm. you're the Avatar, in which case you get all four. But there's no in-between. No one can wield, like, two or, or three or some weird combination. You know? I'm not laughing at anything, Audra. That's the problem. That's the problem. Ooh. It's it's just it's just the giggles live in me, and I don't know how to control them. Like I would my giggle box mood. Like truly, before this, before we got on the live, I was talking to the case, and I was just looking at her laughing. Nothing happened, and she was trying to figure out what happened. Do I need to look somewhere? Did did something happen on Twitter? No. I was, this is just me being like, insane. I can't I was help it. <laughs> Because it was like a full, full chested, full chested laugh. Yeah. So I was like, I just, 
<laughs> I was like searching in the timeline. I'm like, what did I miss? Trying to like decipher through her laughs. I'm like, what words? It, you know? So yeah, yeah, it's just what where we are today. Yep. And I would be with her, but I'm I'm just like very drained today. Yeah. So I'm having a hard time. I'm sorry. I'm trying to maintain and keep the professional facade up because great. it's just a facade. Okay. Oh, for all of us. <laughs> yes. For all of us. <laughs> Not alone. Okay. But uh, um. Oh, go ahead, Chelsea. No, you talk, please. No, I was going to say, um. <laughs> what? It wasn't me this time. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Did it. I literally, I went to darkness in my brain. Um. <laughs> I just completely left. I did, I, okay. I'm going to try to reel it in. What I was thinking. We have been talking a lot about, you know, how do we know, like, when to extend our story? I think it would be, I think we should definitely uh, hit on knowing when to, uh, like, uh, Chelsea, help me. Con- brain. Concisify it? Shorten it. Concisify! <laughs> the the yeah, fact I, that that I, came I, to my brain before shorten did. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I love concisify. Put that in, in the dictionary. Um, yes, I think it's so important to know when to reel yourself back in. Not everything has to be an epic saga. Not everything has to be a multi-book love story. Mm-hmm. Not everything has to have a prequel or a sequel or a threequel or all that other stuff. Sometimes That sounded really gross, by the way. I just want it's you to know good. that. It's good. I hate it. I hate that I said it. I want to retcon that sentence. I would like to retcon most of today. Um, also, um, Aphrodite Lee made it. Hey, how you doing? Hey. <laughs> And <laughs> Lydia is here as well. How are you doing? And oh, I have a question from Ben. Thanks, Ben. Um, oh, and also, D.L. White said that she doesn't write series, and so I need to know more about that. Like, why not? You know, that's not a, that's oh, not a bad thing, know. but always. And Antoine is here. Antoine Bendele is here. Hey, how you doing? Oh. Also, you guys, we got a chance to interview him, and he has a lot of books coming out, so make sure that you check the Melanin Library and check him out, because he has TJ Young and the Arisha coming out pretty soon, and the synopsis yeah. sounds dope as I don't know what, so check it out. It's on the Melanin Library. Mm-hmm. There you go. Free out. He's definitely the, he's definitely <laughs> the one to study when it comes to a series. Yes. Um, but to answer your, answer your question, Ben, oh, I originally could weigh in on this wanted... Too. Huh? I was saying Antoine could weigh in on this, too, because he writes series, like, intentionally. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, please, please uh, put um, advice in the chat. Um, but, okay, sorry, I lost the question. What was it? What made you said? decide to write a series? I write a series. So originally I was going to do a standalone. Um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this short. Sorry, this story <laughs> as short and concisified <laughs> as I can. Um, <laughs> essentially, I wanted to write a fantasy, but I was like, I don't think there's really a market for it, the kind of fantasy I want to write. So I wrote like a straight, just historical fiction. Didn't really feel like me because I wasn't writing what I wanted to write. And I thought there's no way I'm going to be able to sell a historical fiction with a black lead in this time frame and get more than one book. So I wrote that book and it just did not, it didn't work. And then I thankfully met Chelsea and I told her my original plan. And she was like, that sounds great. Um, And my original plan included multiple books. So I think it's really important to, Think about your original plan. Like, what is your plan for the book? You need to have a plan. I don't. Th- I. I just do not subscribe to the willy nilly. Like, <laughs> just like <laughs> I can't fly by the. Th- I cannot. I live my life by the seat of my pants. I cannot write by the seat of my pants, or I'll never get anything done. So it was really important to me to have a plan. You know, um, that helps me to flesh out characters. That helps me to make sure I am leaving breadcrumbs. Mm-hmm. So if this might not help people because it really is kind of like an. Um, an intuitive process but if you come up with a story and it feels like there's enough there not not just like a, a whole bunch of information but like enough action uh, enough intrigue or um and i think that actually applies to like if you're writing a biography you know mm-hmm. um if there's enough there that it warrants more than one book um mm-hmm. i say go for it again that doesn't always mean you have to write like six books sometimes yeah. it is just two books you know, and, or maybe it's a book and, and, like, a novella, you know? But you have to have a plan. Sorry, go ahead, Chelsea. Yeah. No, I was just saying I agree with you because, too, like, obviously, 
we want you to like take the like listen to the tips that we're giving you and we're, we hope that they're helpful but also like you said it is a very intuitive process and it is. and dl white i'll also put it in here that she doesn't think in series she thinks in one story at a time right and i feel like that's very important like all of this, like if, like if there are breaks and, you know, is there enough and are you leaving breadcrumbs and yada, 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 like all that's important. But also like as a writer, you know yourself in your writing style the best. So yeah. it's like if you feel like you've got three books in you or two books in you or eight books in you or whatever, how many ever, go for that. However, if right. you know from the, from the onset, like this is one story, then go for that as well. Like I wouldn't oh. advise that you try to stretch um, one book into multiple, mm. but I also mm. wouldn't advise that you try to force multiple books into one because that's when Agreed. you start looking at getting like, a, you have like a 800 page novel and you're like, no one's going to read this, <laughs> you Whoa. know, and yeah. <clears throat> vice versa. And um, I'll also say this, like Antoine is dropping some really helpful stuff in the chat. Yeah. So, Thank um, you, Antoine. Um, he said for indie series are paramount for read through. And he said, for example, Lord of the Rings is one story in three parts, which I'm not a Lord That's of the so Rings much. person. So yeah, Antoine and I are on the same page with that. That was a, a great example of a story that um, there's no way it could have been one story. <laughs> like, there's no way it could have been one book. <laughs> it could not have been one book just because there was so much lore. There was, there were so many rich characters, not just a bunch of people, but like rich characters mm -hmm. that you wanted to know what they were all going through. So like that, that, yeah, Antoine, thank you. That's a great example of a yeah. story that follow, like a, a series that follows one story, but it's broken up in such a way that makes sense. I think a, another series that um, is kind of the opposite of that, where it's multiple stories mm -hmm. in a series um, would be like The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, or The Chronicles of Narnia. Mm -hmm. um, I, fair, I think fair enough, C.S. Lewis gets a lot of criticism but just thinking about in terms of writing and longevity of the stories there's seven books there mm -hmm. each story is self-contained but okay. it, each story also progresses the like lore of narnia and it all comes full circle so i think that's another really good thing to look at how to like write a self-contained book that is connected um to a larger mm -hmm. series and so i will say that i do enjoy um series where you okay because i know you said that you don't really like it when uh, the series follows different characters in the same timeline. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think it can be done, but it depends. Like what I don't want is I don't want to follow the character. So like, let's say I have character a right character a in uh -huh. book one goes on a journey, but they run into character B and character B has a simultaneous timeline in book one. Right. In book two, I don't want to follow character B who all, who and it follows a story of them running into character A because I've just spent the entire time with character A and I've seen it already. So I don't really want to read another, you know, three, four hundred page book from character B's perspective. But yeah. if you're like character A and B are in book one and then you have character E and F in book two and then character K and S in book three, I know those letters don't go together, but <laughs> loved it. <laughs> I wanted to make sure they sounded different enough so I didn't confuse anybody. Yep. But that's the type of thing I can get with. And then you're still build, building out the world. Um, so I can get with that, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Also, want to shout out yeah. Celeste showed up. Hey, girl, how you doing? Uh, oh, hey, girl. <laughs> BC Brown Books is also here. So, hey, how you doing? We're glad to have you. Um, so, As we're yeah. enjoying this conversation. <laughs> and also, authors... Authors, editors, people in the chat, if you have advice on how to break up stories or how to condense stories, please, like, mm -hmm. um, people are dropping such great information. Keep it coming because it helps us as well. Yeah. Helps everybody. Helps everybody. Um, so Ben asked the question uh, to me of what led me to oh. decide to change what I had originally written to be a series and change it to a single book. Um, mm -hmm. For me, that decision came from a lot of different factors. One, um, to be honest, I just got tired of the characters. I do not have the attention span yeah. to write a series in the sense of, um, of, uh, whatchamacallit, whatchamacallit, um, following the same characters for a long length of time because I get sick of writing right. them. And I have so many ideas living in my head most of the time. 
after I finish, I want to move on to the next idea and not necessarily stay with those same characters. Also, Antoine, no, we don't have Super Chat enabled. We're not that popular yet. I'm sorry. But we do have a Patreon Today. link <laughs> down in the, <laughs> in the description. And if you want to do a one-time thing, we do have a PayPal donation as well we if you guys want to support. Um, oh, hey, Eva. <laughs> yeah, Eva's here. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Welcome. And um, so, yeah, that was that was my thing. I just needed to... I need a distance from those characters. And also for me, um, I had spent so much time with those characters already because I had been working on the book for like since I was in high school. And so when I finally got to the end, I just wanted it to be the end. And so the original idea I had when I started it just didn't fit the actual story that it became. And it didn't huh. fit where I was going as a writer, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I guess tying that back into the advice... Also acknowledge that you change as a writer. So like if you had intended to write a series and you realize and it takes you longer than necessary or you realize halfway through or towards the end that this is not that, it's cool to change it. And I feel like we have to give ourselves grace as writers and recognize that it's okay if it doesn't go according to plan. It's fine <laughs> if, you know, you have to change what you imagined. It's okay if they just go on one adventure instead of like mm -hmm. five, you know? Yeah. 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 Even if you want to write stories in that same world, like you can write different characters in that same world or have a have a spin-off type thing. I feel like spin-offs don't get enough love for what they are because it's just like you have an amazing world. It's like it's cool, but like let's follow different characters, let's do different things, see different things, experience oh, different things, you know. Totally. I mean, The Mandalorian's a spin-off and I think most of us here love it. Uh Chelsea hasn't seen it yet, but if she had seen it, she would probably love it. Also, I feel like, okay, when I, when I leaned this way, I was not passing gas. I'm sitting on a leather chair and my legs got stuck. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put that disclaimer this, in the chat. This by a show of hands. Did any of you guys see her lean? <laughs> did you need that disclaimer? Because <laughs> I didn't and I've been looking at her the whole time. <laughs> I did it and I was like, this looks very, this looks very nasty. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh, oh I'm, I'm so oh. amazed we made it so far today. Um, oh. Friday, oh my gosh, there's so much good stuff in the chat. Also, do we say hi to BC Brown Books? Hello. I believe we did. And Eva is here as well. I think we said hi to her. Mm -hmm. I want to make uh, sure. So many, so many good things. Uh, and I'm trying to keep up. You guys are, keep it coming, y'all. This is so helpful. Honestly. Um, Oh, and duologies. I feel like duologies don't get a lot, lot of love. I feel like when we don't, we, when, they should. Whenever we talk about series, it, it's always, you know, like you have to have at least three books <coughs> or three books or more. And it's like, no, two books is completely legit. Um, and I feel like there's kind of been like a rise in duologies lately because, um, yeah. At least in traditional publishing, because I know on my Twitter feed, it's always people are getting signed for like two book deals and things like that. Um, and the ones mm -hmm. that come to my mind immediately are like, um, uh, what's her name? A Song Below Water and A Chorus Rises is like a duology. Um, yeah. And that's and, different characters. Yeah. And then Kingdom, Kingdom of Souls and Reaper of oh. Souls is a duology. Okay. Um, and then like, uh, what is it? The Song of Wraith and Ruin and then Psalm of Wraith and Ruin. I think that's a duology oh. as well. Okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> Although I think Christina Forrest, love her. Um, she just, I think, signed. I don't know if it's a duology or not. But she writes romance. But I think she, uh -huh. technically, we could we could count her first two books as a duology. Because oh, yeah, because they have inter interlapping or interact. lapping characters. So, yeah, yeah, they interact with people from the first book. Which, I, that's an example of a romance doing it. You know, I think mm -hmm. we see that a lot. Um, I think about um, Beverly Jenkins. Well, that's a trilogy. Never mind. I, gonna, I thought, I forgot they, she had, came up with the third one. But she does that sometimes where yeah. we've got just a couple. The Dream Blood duology. Oh, I don't think I've heard of the uh, Dream Blood duology. Ooh, tell me more about that. Um, yeah, what's that about, Ashley? The Grishaverse. Um, um, what else? I feel like we missed so much in the chat. The case, you're supposed to be keeping so them much. with it. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to blame oh, someone that's I'm not me. I don't know, blame anybody. <laughs> uh, that's Alphonse's job. I'm, I'm the chat matron. So Celeste is saying, I feel the best way to condense a story is, to is simplifying the goals, character, plot, and plot-wise. And more often than not, you're including a lot of ideas, maybe more than necessary for one novel. I would agree. Yeah. We don't have to put, we don't have to put all the things into one book. 
we definitely don't have to put all the things into one book, and that's yeah. And if you that's are a hard trying, thing. and if you are trying to condense it, something else that you can do is consider like a time skip, especially if your characters yeah. have to level up before they fight the big bad. Instead of showing every battle leading up to that, and I'm saying that like it's fantasy because that's where I spend most of my life, but. Honestly, like you can have a time skip or yeah. even if it's just like romance, you know, you can have a time skip between when they meet the right person and they get themselves together, <laughs> you know, yeah. just totally. plant the seeds of what they're doing and then be like, okay, and two years later, you know, in the SpongeBob voice, y'all know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, oh, okay. So the blood, uh, series is in KGMS and it has ninja priests I'm here for it. Always that. Tasha Harrison, a D.L. White saying Tasha Harrison has a duology, the truth duet, both decadent stories. Ooh, great word. I love the word decadent. Decadent stories. Okay. See, I we're seeing them all over the place with different genres. I think this is so important for no matter like what, what you're trying to write. Absolutely. Um, it's really important to think about these things. You, you, want, you don't want to lose your readers. I think mm-hmm. going either way can lose your readers if you don't do it the right way. I said way a lot, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> We follow you. Um, it's not what I'm happening. I lost, I lost my train of thought on that. Um, a couple of other tips. Like, honestly, if you're watching this in the future, please make sure you're paying attention to the chat because they're dropping a lot of good, good tips. So um, much. One of the things that I saw was, like, you have to have a good hook regardless. And I will say this. If you have an idea for multiple books, make sure that you have a starting place for multi- for both books because... Something that I've noticed is that some of, well, not in the phone that I've noticed, but advice, general advice that floats around in the Twitterverse, right? Is that um, keep in mind that not everybody is going to read your series in order. So if you can't continue without, uh, what am I trying to say? The case help me. It's, it's like, <laughs> don't, just, don't just throw your hands up. <laughs> It's kind of. <laughs> hey, Mooney Queen. <laughs> hey, Mooney Queen. <laughs> um, I can't remember what you I'm trying what? to say, but the idea basically is that you, you, someone should ideally be able to pick up, pick your book up at any point in the series and continue reading without being completely lost. Like, obviously, there are going to be things that you build up to in the first book because it's a series. They build off of each other. Mm-hmm. But. So, for example, like when we were talking about Binti, you can 100% pick up the second book in the Binti series totally. and read it and understand what happened in the first book. Like, you're still going to want to go back and read it if you have questions. However, you don't, it's not necessary for you to understand what's going on. And so, in a lot of ways, your series, in certain aspects, need to work as standalones as well. I agree. And also, I just want to address um, our, our hate Nash chat. I did not abandon. I didn't abandon Chelsea. <laughs> I was also, I was disassociating. Okay. <laughs> just like, not disassociating. I, I popped in a grape and I started thinking about this bag I want to buy. I'm sorry, Chelsea. I'm back. Girl, it's cute. Okay. <laughs> My stomach Long hurt. day. I'm sorry. I didn't do it on purpose. My stomach. Do it on purpose. <laughs> uh, like I'm just like some Benedict Arnold in the chat. Dude, you want me to want me to want me to say some nonsense to really prove that I wasn't listening? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, it's okay. and y'all. Uh. <laughs> Golly! Uh, paddles. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Chelsea. Well, you know I'm here for you. <laughs> no, you're not. You're thinking about bags. <laughs> okay. So um, oh, goodness gracious. Um. So yeah. Um, God, I'm lost. I'm sorry. I can't even try to eloquently, eloquently, elegantly pick up. <laughs> where we left off. I'm making up words. <laughs> I remember earlier when you said condensified. It was the best day. Condensified should be a word, first of all, because oh, they taught us in school that if you have a pre- if you have a prefix, a suffix, and a root word, it's a word. That's how words work. Condensify. All right. A fi is a suffix. It means to do something. All right. That's all I'm saying. That was my rant. Thank you for listening. Sorry if I busted I was, your. Dreams. I was a hundred percent with you on it. 
because I listened. <laughs> that time. Um, <laughs> Most times. <laughs> um, and Antoine pointed out something that I think is actually very sage advice. If you are going to write a series and it's going to be more than uh, three books, because obviously the books are going to build upon, it, upon each other. He said that the first right. three books in a series all have to be mini entry points, like the first three Harry totally. Potter books. And I agree. Um, like, I, I mean, I have nothing to add to that. That's very sage advice. I think you should take that yeah. to heart, honestly, because mm-hmm. on later books, like most people are not going to pick up a series on book four, or book five. Most no. people, right? It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Um, and then there, of course, yeah. there are series like um, the series of unfortunate events, where it's like you kind of need to read all of them in order to understand what's happening. Right. right? But then you have yeah. series like Nancy Drew or the what is the other one? The one with the boys, I can't remember. Describe. It was like it was like the 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 male version of Nancy Drew. It was like two boys. Who the Hardy was... Boys. Yeah, maybe. I don't think that's it, Probably but maybe. Yeah, I think the Hardy Boys. They solve mysteries. Yeah. That's yeah. That's an older series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. Point is, there's a ton of books in both of those series, and you can pick any of them up mm-hmm. and read them in any order. And they good. They don't build off of each other. It's the same characters, but they don't really build off of each other. They're all self-contained. Um, totally. So, yeah. Uh, a good example. Oh, thanks, Salter. Okay. I thought it was okay, the Hardy so, yeah, Boys. Okay, so, yeah. They're, they're all agreeing with you. It's the Hardy Boys. I didn't read the yeah. Hardy Boys, so. They're, it's it's an older series. Um, but I think that's, like, that's a great example. I, I, oh, I and Animorphs. That was the one. Animorphs. I love Animorphs. That's that was my. One. That was my. Oh. Can we count R.L. Stein? <laughs> are those all those are not a series? I don't, I don't know. think it's a series. I think they were not a series. Well, was it who was Animorphs written by? I will tell was you. It, was it was it R.L. Stein? I can't tell you. I, like as a kid, like I'm into authors now as an adult, but as a kid, I couldn't tell you who wrote anything. Um, Four books in the Animorphs series. Wow. How many? Fifty-four. Written oh, by Catherine, I only had Catherine two. Alper, <laughs> the, uh, husband and wife duo. Wrote under the name K. Applegate for Catherine and Michael Applegate. Um, they published under Scholastic 54 books from 96 to 2001. They published 54 books in five years. I Ain't no way. Oh. That's, that's, that's terrifying. Honestly. Wow. Well, at least yeah. it's something they could do together. That's insane. So. 54. More power to you. I don't think I like anybody that much. <laughs> I mean, I love my I mean, husband, but I don't know. Do I mean, that, that begs the question. Would any of you write, like, a book with your significant other, <laughs> let alone 50 yeah. in five years? Jeez Louise. But, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Oh, uh, but Antoine makes the point that middle grade books are short and sweet because it's yeah. not like you're, they're writing, they're all 400-page books. They're all, like, what, 100 and some odd pages. Yeah, so, they're for they're for definitely for middle grade but, readers. But honestly, know. writing for a younger audience can be It's difficult. hard. <laughs> If, if you if y'all want us to talk about that, that would be a fun topic. One yeah, of our favorite grade younger audience books. Let us know. For sure. Um, honestly, you guys, I read one R.L. Stein book and it scared me. And I read it because my brother left it in the car and I forgot to bring oh, no. a book on a road trip. And so I read it and I freaked myself out. And honestly, oh, yeah, it was scary. I just, I'm a big scaredy cat. Y'all know I'm a scaredy cat. So pair that with my brother traumatizing me with the, okay, so this is a show on Disney Plus. This is a site rant. I'm so sorry. I can't rabbit it today. Okay. There is a show on <laughs> Disney Plus. It's a movie. It's about, <laughs> it's about the boogeyman. Okay. And I found it. The movie scared the crap out of me as a kid. I remember, <laughs> yes. I remember watching that. Yeah. I remember watching that. And it was so frightened. terrifying because he would reach out under the bed and drag the children under. And I was just like, and my brother was, I love him. He's a wonderful person as an adult, but as a child, he terrorized me. And he made me believe that the boogeyman was truly under my bed. And so whenever I had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, I for sure was convinced that I was going to get taken. And <laughs> no, I was going to know. <laughs> to this day, I run up from the basement. And like, turn off the light and sprint. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm out of here. 
<laughs> out of here. Like, like the ghost is going to stop at the top of the stairs. Like, oh, yeah, oh, you win. Right. Um, <laughs> like, for me, got me. It, it was the, for me, it was the, the bottom of the stairs. So the bathroom was at, is at the end of the, was in front of the stairs. So you have the bathroom and then you have the stairs coming straight down. So it's just like, ah, oh, they can't get me at the top of the stairs. Like, monsters don't know how to navigate stairs. Or yeah, blankets, like, oh, for that oh. matter. Like, <laughs> can we talk about the logic? Oh, hiding under a blanket? <laughs> oh, my God. Like, I don't know. I don't know what the heck, no. Like, the monster I mean, can cross dimensions, but it's going to stop at a blanket. It's like, it's like, ah. <laughs> You know what, I think we, we got under the blanket and just got so hot we passed out. <laughs> Yo, okay, so V.C. Andrews. I had the Ooh. Flowers in the Attic series. It's on Mess this bookshelf back up. here. That mess. mess is sick, bruh. Uh, like, it is. how do they let, how did that get into school? <laughs> dark <laughs> like super mm. super dark like i remember my mom took me to ed mckay which is a used bookstore i don't even i don't even know if it's still open at this point but mm. and they had like these uh they had like 99 cent books so she was basically like you could get whatever you want like it's like okay bet this is not barnes and noble chelsea can leave with a stack of books right and so yep. i remember getting the series and yo i was not ready if you have not read flowers in the attic um, oh. it's old enough that I can't spoil it for you, but basically it's about this mom who locks her four kids up in an attic and slowly starts to poison them and her twisted way of trying to get them out of the attic. And then they grow up with some weird trauma and there's some incest stuff happening and there is wild. It's, it's wild. Serious. And a serious. So <laughs> and an abusive grandma. <laughs> Oh my god! I watched the Lifetime movie recently, and I was like, ah. <laughs> "I don't want to see that <laughs> on the big screen." <laughs> and I was like, oh, "I like make sure nobody like came down to like see that what I was watching." <laughs> it felt so illicit. <laughs> and they anyway. all, she had another one about um, these twins who were born, but one of them lived in a bayou, but one of them was rich. And they I were, remember that one. And they were identical, and man, baby, that got dark too. And I was just like. Yo, there are no happy endings to this. Like none. <laughs> Old VC Andrews. What happened to her? And um, I think she died, and her family kept putting out books under her name. So oh, I think she died the... in '86. Oh wow. Yeah, and so I think the later books aren't as like twisted because honestly, there's only one kind of mind that can come up with that. Let's be real. Um, but it's. Like, I, I was so intrigued because I honestly, when I read it, I was like, I don't know where this is going. And I was, like, I was too intrigued to be afraid. Because I was like, <laughs> you know, my mom was not locking me up in the attic. We ain't even got an attic. So, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Attics st- uh, truly scare me to this day. <laughs> oh, oh cool. Deborah, great. Hi, Deborah. What Daniel hey, Mom. Feel- yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. I, I'm just, I'm so used to seeing Lockhart. Um, I mean, I got married, homie. Still. I know. <laughs> it's, it's, my brain does that. Um, I forget. I always forget what your maiden name is. Would Danielle Steele be considered a series since all the plots were the same? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> <laughs> she knew what she did well. <laughs> she definitely knew what she did well. <laughs> I mean, she found her money tree and didn't uproot it. <laughs> she did. She was like, I don't know why you want me to go to the left or the right. I'm standing right here. Yeah. Like, this is where it's at. <laughs> So, not even a lie, oh I got God. a kick out of a lot of Daniel Still books, too, as a kid. But then, you know, yeah. you grow and you learn and you read more stuff. And you you learn better, you do better. But yeah, it holds a warm place in my heart because my grandma always read Daniel Steele and, like, um, oh, my gosh, Nora Roberts. She would sit there in her recliner and read those books while soap operas were playing. And I was, like, eating my lunch. Like, that was just our thing. <laughs> not so, reading summers, a book and listening to soap operas at the same time. That kind of brain. <laughs> How do you do it? <laughs> she raised six kids. That was child's play. <laughs> I mean, she six kids in Kansas. She's like, this is nothing. Yeah. Put on something else. I can play pinochle. <laughs> I play the spades. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So DIY said some very popular authors just write the same book over and over. And let's be real, they do. That is let's yeah. that's a, that's a money train, you guys. If you can get on it, that some people make a living off. More of power to you, for real. Same story, different names. <laughs> so Nora Roberts has her own store. Audra. Where? <laughs> in Maryland, she said that. Where in, the, shh, where in Maryland? <laughs> 
There are cities in Maryland. Um, I'll find it. Audrey, drop it in the chat. Uh, okay, we're literally coming up okay. in an hour, and I feel like we could talk about this all day long. So, we- folks, if you haven't already, it's not too late. Sign up for the Patreon, right, Chelsea? Is it too late? No, it's it? never too late to sign up for the Patreon. <laughs> it's never. <laughs> continue this conversation. Sign yeah. up for the Patreon. We're going to be talking for a, a little bit more and probably drop some F bombs. Who knows? LaCase does. Okay, Ma, don't believe her. It's not me. <laughs> but yes. A um, bed and breakfast? Boone's really? Home. Interesting. If it wasn't a pandemic, I'd consider it, but there's just something about sleeping in somebody else's bed in a pandemic where I'm just like, eh, totally. maybe not. That, you know, honestly, it sounds dope, but I feel like I can't do it anymore after knowing how nasty people are, you know? Yeah, they don't wash hands. Of life. You know? Mm. Hands, so. soap, soap, washcloths, yeah. legs. So. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, all that being said, you guys, um, Ooh, it left me. What am I going to say? Oh, we're coming up in the melanin chat. So if you haven't already, please leave a thumbs up on the stream. That helps us out a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Turn on the notifications so you don't miss us doing this next week. If you want to join the after chat, then click the link down the Patreon below. $5 gets you in and it also gets you some amazing stuff like exclusive book exclusive book content and some goodies depending on which tier you sign up for just check it out it doesn't hurt you to click on the link and just take a look just saying um that check out the melanin library as well if you haven't already we have over like a thousand books i think we're coming up on like 1200 at this point so it's wild (laughs) Mm -hmm. but they're all black authors they are i don't even know what to say they're all black authors and the books are there and it's amazing and it's a resource (laughs) wonderful (laughs) So, Wonderful books. Yeah. Um, we appreciate you guys so much for being in the chat and for making it so fun. Thank you for sticking with me through my laughing fits. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. Okay. Hi, Hi Derek. Derek Dixon. We met in middle school. <laughs> my, best, my best homie since middle school. Hey, Derek. Sorry, Chelsea. <laughs> I love that we did middle school. Like, <laughs> But yeah, but thank you guys so, so, so much for being here. We appreciate you. And that's it, you guys. There's nothing else that I can say. Um, We will be here next week, same time, having the same discussion. Well, not same discussion, different topic. But. (laughs) Duology. We're going to retread the exact same. (laughs) I don't, I'm done. I don't have anything else to say. Thank you for being here. (laughs) We appreciate you. And until next time, we hope your days are lovely and your books are interesting. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs>